testing. Great. Last time we talked about negation. And I was trying to explain this sentence. The difference between adding a comma be before because or not adding that comma. Uh, and I think I missed mi I mixed up the Chinese. So. The first one is I didn't invite him. And the reason I didn't invite him is because he's too young. So in Chinese, the second one is. I didn't invite him. But the reason is not because he's too young. The actual reason is because he's too old. The not in didn't is negating the first because it is saying it is not because. So in Chinese, this sentence is. So see what a big difference one comma makes. Now, if you will please turn to page 13. After class last time, one student came up to ask me about question. 22. I said that the answer is how do you spell bicycle? And the student asked. But the answer says you. So shouldn't the question be how do I spell bicycle? Isn't this a conversation? And I said normally you would be correct. But in this case. A is not actually asking B. How does B spell bicycle? A is asking how do we how does anyone spell bicycle? So when A says, how do you spell bicycle? Uh, and when B implicitly answers, you spell bicycle, etc. The you is not the you of me and you. The you is an impersonal you, a general person. Uh, so for example, if I say, uh, when you wake up in the morning, uh, you probably feel hungry. I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm saying when a person wakes up in the morning, right? So the you is not a personal pronoun. It is an impersonal pronoun. It is anybody. So how does anybody spell bicycle? Uh, how do you spell bicycle? That's why the answer is you and not I. OK, and then I have an announcement before we begin this week's lesson. Um, if you look at the schedule. Where is it? It says that we will have the midterm exam on week 10. But it also says that we will be covering a new unit noun clauses on week nine. As you know, usually every week the first hour is comparing the homework answers. So there will be homework on week nine. I guarantee you there are a lot of questions for this unit. So in fact, during week 10, we will spend the first part of class comparing answers. And then I will give you a 10 minute break and then we will do the midterm exam. The same week, week 10. This means that you should probably not wait until after class if you have questions to ask me. The midterm exam will include at least one question about noun clauses, the unit on week nine. It is part of the exam. 
So right after we compare answers, that knowledge will be used on the exam. So at that time, as we compare answers, if you have questions about that homework, I highly encourage you to ask me immediately, not after class. Otherwise, it might be too late to help you on the midterm exam. Now, this means you will not have two hours for the exam, but experience tells me you probably don't need two hours on the exam. There will be 10 mistakes or 10 errors for you to catch. Um, and I don't think you need two hours to catch 10 mistakes. Um, if something does come up and you feel like you need more time, you can negotiate with me after the exam. We can work something up, but I don't think you'll, you really will have to um, have that much time. OK. This week, we're going to be talking about direct quotations. In other words, how do you use quotation marks? The first thing to know about quotation marks, and this is the reason I'm using Microsoft Word, is that they should be curved. Right, you notice the first quotation mark goes in one direction. The second set of quotation marks goes in the other direction. If you type on your phone, the quotation marks will probably be straight. Uh, let's see if we can get a straight quotation mark. Like that. I don't. Can you see this? <laughs> Sorry. OK, OK, I'll, I'll uh, see if I can find a way to make this bigger. You can see the difference, right? On the Word file, these are in different directions. In the Notepad file, these are straight. Straight quotation marks are technically wrong. Um, this mark is actually called, uh, well, it, it can, it's a mathematical symbol. It's used in math. Um, in math, one, this really is too big, sorry. One quotation mark, is feet. Two quotation marks is inches. Or. Um, greaves. OK, yeah, this is too big. <laughs> so these are technically not quotation marks. The only correct quotation marks uh, are curved, or they call this curly quotes or smart quotes. Right, so you have the double quotation marks and the single quotation marks. So here's the general principle about using quotation marks. The words that you put in between must be exactly the same as where you found them or where you heard them. We use quotation marks to use other people's words, to present other people's words. When you present those words, they must look exactly the same as when you found them. Um, this is not, this rule in Chinese is not exactly that strict. If you, um, like read a newspaper. Do you guys read newspapers anymore? No? Yeah, OK, so if you read like a news article. Do you guys read news articles? Do you guys just just watch like Instagram or something? I don't know. So if you read a news article in Chinese and it uses quotation marks and it says this person said this. 
And um, if the article also has a video and you watch the video, a lot of the time it is not exactly what the person said. It's like 90% the same, but it's not exactly the same. In English, you cannot do that. In English, it has to be 100% the same. Um, but sometimes the language, because English has like tense, aspect, number, a lot of grammar rules, right? So sometimes the grammar of the quoted words doesn't match the grammar of your sentence. In this case, you might have to modify the quotation, but in order to tell the reader that you have changed something about the original language, there are two ways to tell the reader. Not, not this page, hang on. Not this page. A here, okay, yeah. Uh, this is from my writing four class. If you're taking my writing four, we will get to this in the second half of the semester. Here, look at the bottom here. Um, if you need to add something, put it in between square brackets. So the original quotation said raising proficiency. If you think you need to add something, raising the proficiency, put it in between square brackets. Uh, if you read Chinese, sometimes uh, the author will tell you that they added something, but they use parentheses. In English, uh, or rather, this could cause some confusion. You don't know if the parentheses are part of the original quote. Sometimes you're, you will be quoting a sentence that already has parentheses. So how do you know if the parentheses were added by the author or if they were already in the original language? Using square brackets avoids this problem most of the time because in English, Square brackets are used only for this purpose, to add material to a quotation. It is not used to add extra information. It is not used for any other purpose, only to add language to a quotation. So using square brackets avoids most of the confusion. So that's adding material. What if you need to take out material from a quotation? In this case, you would use ellipses, san jie hao. So the original quotation says proficiency and efficiency of the students. Here we have taken out and efficiency. Instead, we have placed an ellipses to tell the reader there was something here, but I took it out. How do you type an ellipses? Period, space, period, space, period, space. It's not three dots put together. There are spaces in between. And if you are skipping things at the end of a sentence, You do it like this. Period. Uh, there are four periods. This is the period that tells the reader this is the end of the sentence. And then you add an ellipses at the end to tell the reader the original sentence had more words, but I'm taking them out. Now, if you do add things to a quotation, or if you take things away from a quotation, this poses an ethical problem. How should the reader believe that the meaning is the same? Right? You can add random stuff to a quotation and change the meaning. You can take things out of the quotation and change the meaning. So as a writer, you have the responsibility to make sure that the meaning is the same. It's like, um, it's like cheating on an exam, right? You're not supposed to do it. If somebody catches you, you will be punished. But nobody is going to like 
um, focus on you during the entire exam to make sure you don't cheat, right? If I give an exam, I have to look here, I have to look there, I can't focus on you 100%. Same thing with changing quotations. We trust that you will not change the meaning. If you do change the meaning and we catch you, your reputation will be ruined but we're not going to focus on you 100% and check every time you change your quotation. It's the honor system. In terms of grammar, this is how you change your quotation. Now, when we use quotations, they are not going to be the only thing in your essay. So how do you use quotations in between. For example, most of the time quotations will be something that somebody said. So the easiest way is somebody said, like that, right? So I love grammar is the thing that he said. He used these three words exactly uh, present tense and the exclamation point at the end Jing Tan Ho tells you that he was being serious he wasn't joking I want you to pay attention again to the grammar to the punctuation there is a comma between the first part we call the first part a speech tag uh, there is a comma between the speech tag and the quotation. Now, the speech tag, you can put it at the beginning of the sentence. You can put it at the end of a sentence. You can put it in the middle of a sentence. These three sentences have the exact same meaning. But the mood, the attitude, the style is different. The first one introduces the person first and then tells us his feelings about grammar. The second sentence emphasizes his love of grammar and then uh, reminds you that this is he who said it. it. It's like the speech tag is only there because it's required. The third sentence adds suspense. Zhang Li. We see I, so we know he's going to talk about himself. But by adding the speech tag in the middle, it makes us wait for what he wants to say. And only after the speech tag do we discover, oh, he's saying that he loves grammar. Of course, all three of these in real life is simply some guy standing here saying, I love grammar. In the actual situation, there's no difference. The difference is in the experience of reading. Reading is a linear process. You can only take in information one part at a time. So changing where you put the speech tag changes the order of taking in information and it creates a different reading experience. So you'll notice uh, just like in the first one, in the third one, there are commas separating the speech tag from the quotation. A comma after the first part of the quotation and a comma after the speech tag. But in the second one, there is no comma. And this is because there is already a sentence final punctuation here, so we skip the comma. In terms of grammar, there should be a comma, uh, but the comma just tells us it separates the quotation from the tag and the exclamation point can do the same thing. So we don't have to add another comma. There's one, there are a few other situations we should talk about. So I have been using an example of one complete sentence, right? I love grammar, subject, 
verb object. But what if it's more than one sentence? Two sentences, right? I love grammar and then it's so easy and fun, she said. Now, the second sentence does not end with an exclamation point. It ends with a period. It's so easy and fun, period. But again, in order to tell the reader that this is not the end of the whole sentence, we change the period into a comma. This comma tells the reader after the end of the quotation, the sentence continues. You will also note that I have been putting commas inside the quotation marks. Right, first comma and then quotation. This is American English. If you are writing in British English, you would put the comma outside of the quotation mark. OK, so. If the speech tag comes at the end, it looks like the same. If the speech tag comes at the beginning, it looks the same as the first sentence. But what if you put the speech tag in between these two complete sentences? You'll notice that the sentence ends here. Now, technically, if you wanted to, you can do this. You can make the speech tag part of the second sentence. This is very uncommon. Uh, in terms of style, it doesn't make a lot of sense. As we said, if you put the speech tag at the beginning, you are emphasizing the person. But in this case, you have already started with a quotation, so the emphasis is not very clear. There's no real reason to do it this way. So usually if the speech tag comes between two complete sentences, we make it part of the first sentence. But whether you add it to the first part or the second part, the speech tag can only be part of one of these complete sentence quotations. The sentence has to either end here or end here. You have to choose. You cannot put a comma on both sides. Now, these are for complete sentences. You can also use quotation marks for individual words. And in this case, the grammar is also slightly different. Um, So you see that the quotation is only around the one word that you're talking about. He said the word love. So you're not talking about the whole sentence. You're only talking about this one word. Uh, again, the comma comes within the quotation mark. Um, but if we. For example, we choose the word grammar. In the original quotation, he said, I love grammar exclamation point. You can choose whether or not you want to include the exclamation point as part of your quotation here. Are you focusing on the word grammar, in which case you would add a comma? Or are you focusing on his enthusiasm for grammar? In which case you would not add a comma. Or are you actually saying two sentences? This is the second sentence. This is the first sentence. 
if you put the exclamation point, okay, so if you separate it into two sentences, you now also have a choice. If you put the exclamation point inside, you are again focusing on his enthusiasm for grammar. But if you put the exclamation point outside, you're only focusing on the word grammar. The exclamation point belongs to the entire sentence. So allow me to act out the difference. He said grammar. However, I don't believe him. He said grammar. However, I don't believe him. You can tell there's a different emphasis. If the exclamation point is outside of the quotation mark, you are emphasizing the whole sentence, including the speech tag. You'll also notice that there's no comma here. Right above we said after the speech tag, you have to add a comma. But here you're not quoting a complete sentence, so you don't have to separate the speech tag. The quoted word grammar is the object of this sentence. Subject is he, said is the verb, and quote grammar is the object. So you don't need a comma. You should not add a comma. Now, sometimes when you put one or two words in quotation marks, you are not just presenting someone else's words, you are commenting on those words. So, for example, um, Here. Um, the grammar in this sentence we will be talking about next week. It's an uh, indirect quotation. So in fact, you don't technically need these quotation marks. OK, so if you do it this way, the grammar is perfectly correct. So why would somebody add these quotation marks? Because the author wants to emphasize that this is the word that he that this person used. It's not the author saying that he loves grammar. It's not the author paraphrasing, uh, using the author's own words to express what he th what the author thinks is the meaning that he said. OK, I need to change the pronoun into a woman. It's getting very confusing. OK, so this means that it's not the author saying that she loves grammar. It's she herself used the word love. So it's not based on the author's understanding. It's based on the exact language that this person used. Um, and we usually use this kind of quotation mark in order to comment on the use of language. She said the word love, but I don't believe that she actually loves it. It's like uh, when you're arguing with somebody and you say, but you just said this and you're presenting the exact language that they said. Uh, in ordinary discourse, we call this kind of quotation mark scare quotes. The idea is that uh, you're making the reader careful about this word. It's not just exact language, it's language that you want to say something about. So the reader should be careful and sometimes even scared when they come across this use of quotation marks. Now, 
all of these rules apply in double when you have quotations within quotations. Uh, let's see. So in this case, the entire sentence within quotation marks is something that he says. And you'll notice that inside these double quotation marks. We use single quotation marks. Uh, and if you have quotations within quotations within quotations, you again change back to double quotation marks. So the very outside is always double, and then for every new layer, it turns into single and then double and then single and then double, that kind of thing. OK, one last thing to say about quotation marks. Usually in a story, every time somebody OK, so like in a story, each paragraph will be focused on one person's actions or thoughts or perspective. Usually when another person speaks, the focus changes to that other person. Therefore, usually in a story, every time somebody different speaks, we start a new paragraph. OK, do I really want to type two paragraphs? OK, hang on. OK, so uh, each line is indented Suopai, because each line is the beginning of a new paragraph. First line, I love grammar, he said, so we meet the first character, a guy. Second line, do you really? She asked, so we meet the second character, a girl. Third line, you will notice that there is no speech tag. And this is because uh, this tells the reader that there are only two people in this conversation. So if the second line is the girl, then the third line must be the guy. Guy, girl, guy, girl. And you will often see this uh, in stories in fiction. Um, so if you have like a page of dialogue, uh, alternating lines, and you forget who says what, you might have to go back to the very beginning and then like every two lines count back down. But in those cases, it's probably a sign that this is not a very good story if it's so easy to mix up the two people. OK, I have one more thing to say about quotation marks. If a quotation is more than one paragraph, only the last paragraph will have closing quotation marks.
So here we have a teacher giving a lecture and the lecture has more than one paragraph. I skipped the middle parts, right? Using ellipses because I don't want to type that much. Um, but you'll notice that there is no quotation mark here because the teacher is still talking. Why do we need the second paragraph? Because it's a new topic. Each new topic should have a new paragraph, but it's still the teacher uh, talking. So we it's still part of the quotation. So this quotation mark reminds us that it is still part of the quotation. And only after the teacher has finished saying everything, do we have the closing quotation mark. So there's no quotation mark here because it's still part. The teacher is still talking. The teacher has not finished talking. The quotation mark here is to remind us it is still part of the quotation and only here is the quotation finished. We also have an example of how to put an ellipses after a comma. Right comma and then space dot space dot space dot space. So we have omitted something after the comma. OK, those are direct quotations. Do you have questions? All right, if you don't have questions, let's do some practice. Please turn to page. Eighteen. In this first set of questions, there are six lines and there are five mistakes. Huh. I'll give you uh, five minutes. And you're free to talk with your classmates. Wait, I think some of these questions belong to the next unit. Let's skip this one for now. Um, let's do the second half of this page. So as the example says, if the quotation begins a new sentence, the first letter should be capitalized. Because this is a complete sentence. Um, so there are six questions here. Please add all of the correct punctuation. I'll give you five minutes. You cannot change the words. You can only add punctuation and change some letters to capital letters.
OK, let's begin comparing answers early. Questions? OK, let's take a short break. Uh, during the break, please do the questions on the next page. The first eight questions. Wait, is this the same? It's not the same. Aha, it's very similar, but it's not the same. So please do the top half of page 19, and we'll come back after the break.
OK, let's compare the top half of page 19. Questions? OK, let's take a look at the second half of page 19. Another nine sentences to add punctuation and change uh, into capital letters or not. Nine questions, I'll give you three minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Questions? I have a question for you. Did you catch this comma? There should be a comma after now. Because now is a time. Time is not a subject, verb, or object, so it should be at the end of the sentence. But here we have moved it to the beginning of the sentence, therefore, you should add a comma to tell the reader that the main sentence begins with my children. So it's now comma. Right? If you say yesterday I went to see my friend. Yesterday, comma, I went to see my friend. The logic is the same. Everything else we have already talked about today. So no questions? OK, please turn to the next page. And skip this page. Please turn another page to page 21. We have another 10 questions. For you to add punctuation and capital letters. I will give you four minutes. Again, feel free to talk with your classmates.
Let's compare answers. Questions? Yes. Number three. Yes. So why are there commas on both sides, right? Don't know. Oh, said Henry. Yes. OK, thank you. Um, yeah, the order doesn't matter. You can put the said in front or behind. The meaning is the same. Some people say that it creates a different reading experience. Are you emphasizing the person? Are you emphasizing the speech? I don't think the difference is that big. The only time there would be a big difference is if the speech tag comes at the beginning of the sentence and you choose to say said he instead of he said because it's the very beginning of the sentence, the difference is very noticeable. But in the middle of a sentence, I, I think it's fine. There's no real difference. Both of them are correct. Thank you. Other questions? Um, so for example, question eight, the referee is shouting, so you should use exclamation points. Jing Tang Ho. And question 10, there are two people talking, so you need to change to a new paragraph. 
when you switch to the other person. Uh, and the grammar is not exactly correct. There should be a that here. Uh, we're going to talk about this next week. So no questions? OK, if not, let's go to the next page. Where we have even more similar questions. We have 11. Again, I'll give you four minutes. This is page 22. I'm trying to get to page 29. If we get to page 29, you will not have homework. So four minutes, uh, feel free to discuss with your classmates or with me. I forgot what time we began, so let's compare answers.
Questions? Uh, I want to point your attention to three things. Why do we say three o'clock? What is that o'clock? The apostrophe Piehal, tells us that we are omitting something. We're skipping something in the middle. The full term is of the clock, which means if you look at the clock and it says three, three of the clock, three o'clock. The second thing is you don't always have to use the word say or said. Depending on the situation, you can use other words in your speech tag that give you more information. The only rule here is the word has to be some kind of talking. You cannot say Robert laughed something something because when you laugh, you're not talking. Or singing. In if the case may be. And the third thing is you might have noticed I did something to this. If you look at the question. You'll notice that these two letters are kind of small. Right, they are capital letters, but they're small capital letters. So like if you do regular capital letters, it looks like this but it wants a smaller kind. If you're using Microsoft Word, you can go to font zixing and you can choose this one. Small caps, xiao xing da xie. Right, you can see the difference, right? Yeah, so that's something new about using Microsoft Word. OK, questions, other questions? All right. Next page. Page 23. Oh, this one is interesting. Um, right, so there are five sentences. Again, add punctuation and capital letters. Five sentences, I'll give you three minutes.
before we compare answers, uh, one of your classmates pointed out that this one is wrong. Sorry, the end of question 10. This should be a period. OK, now let's compare answers. Questions? Again, let me draw your attention to a number of issues. Number one, this comma. When the rabbit says Mr. Turtle, the rabbit is talking to the turtle using the turtle's name. Um, so the name is not actually part of the sentence. It's an added information. So to separate the name from the rest of the sentence, uh, in order to, to tell the reader that it's extra information, we add a comma in front. And if the sentence is not finished, behind the name, right? We use two commas to tell the reader that this is extra information. And it's the name of the turtle, so it has to be a capital T. Uh, the next point. Number four, I believe the question says that. He said to himself, yes, OK, so the whole thing, the speech tag is before the question. The speech tag is here. So the entire thing is one quotation. But. If. The speech tag. Was. He thought to himself, so he's thinking to himself. Usually we don't use quotation marks. Instead we use italics shit. He. Because thoughts are not heard. You don't hear somebody thinking. You don't have evidence that this is exactly what they're thinking. So you can't say, oh, it's exactly the same, so I put it inside quotation marks. So instead, if you if somebody thinks something, uh, we use italics. And then the last point, or I guess two more points. Um, here it says that the turtle exclaimed. Uh, 
uh, in Chinese, we usually say something like "hu han" or "jing hu." It's a kind of shout, or it's a kind of energy. So this should be exclamation point. Uh, this comma is here for the same reason as in question one. And then finally, these two commas. The but steady is extra information. So to signify that this is extra information, we use two commas to separate it from the rest of the sentence. Questions? All right, next page, 24. Same thing, and this is quite short. I'll give you two minutes. Let's compare.
Questions? OK, again, let me give you a few comments. Driver's license. You will notice that this is presented differently from the way Olivia Rodrigo named her song. Um, she did not use the apostrophe Pia Ho. There are three. There are usually two ways you can present this like this. A license for each different driver. Or without the apostrophe, a general license for all drivers. Either one is fine. Here, the woman is using officer as a title, so it should be capital O. So it, here it's not a job, it's a title, like Mr. Officer, something like that. Speeding, going too fast, Cao Su. At the corner of these two streets means at the intersection of these two streets, Sizi Luko. At the corner of. Um, and then again, this is the name of a street. Avenue Da Dao is a kind of street. But because this is the name, both words have to be in capital letters. OK, so no questions? OK, well, we didn't make it to page 29, which means you have some homework. Please do page 25, 26, 27, and 28. Uh, so page 29 is for next week. This week, please do 25 to 28. Okay, see you next week.